Hello and welcome to Wisdom from the Word. I'm Pastor Greg. I am fortunate to live in the rugged Smoky Mountains of East Tennessee where there are more snakes than the stars in heaven, at least in my calculation. We have all kinds of snakes, all models of deadly vipers almost everywhere you go, just waiting for a shin bone to latch on to. Now before I continue my little story, I must admit, I hate snakes. There's no love relationship among us. I don't even like looking at their evil eyes behind a bulletproof glass. And what's up with their forked tongues darting in and out? It reminds me of the devil's pitchfork, that is if he has one. My dad once told me he was only scared of two kinds of snakes, dead ones and live ones. And over the years that piece of common sense wisdom has stuck with me closer than peanut butter to the roof of one's mouth in the heat of the Sahara Desert. When Dad and I would go ginseng hunting, he always carried a long walking stick in case he came across a snake of any kind, whether poisonous or not, it didn't matter to him. As long as it crawled on its belly, it was fair game. I never could decide whether to feel sorry for the snake or the walking stick because he would beat that poor snake until he couldn't or until a stick would break. Folks, he truthfully was terrified of snakes. Anyway, reluctantly returning to my snake infested story, we have rattlesnakes in our mountains that grow to be seven and eight feet long with enough venom to mummify a dozen careless hikers within an hour. But there is one attribute they have that other snakes don't. They have a built-in warning system. You see, rattlesnakes will at least have the sporting decency to warn you when you get too close by shaking their tails that have rattles on them. Not the kind of rattle you would give to little Junior to play with now, but built-in ones that I thank God for putting on their tails. When you hear those heart-stopping sounds of a rattlesnake rising from Hades in the woods, the hair on the back of your neck stands to attention. And if you have any common sense at all, you know that each step you take might possibly be your last. So tread carefully, my friends. While we have more skelly crawlers than you can shake a stick at, I want to tell you about one of the most common vipers in our southern neck of the woods. It's called a copperhead. I'm sure you've heard of it. This poisonous, belly-crawling, double-toothed vampire is one of the trickiest varmints God ever put on this planet. I mean they crawl up in the rafters of old barns and houses to catch mice. Once they have their bellies full, with smiles on their ugly faces, they have been known to fall from the rafters down on some poor soul, who doesn't know it, but is about to scream and holler like a pen full of sow pigs fighting over the slop bucket. Hey, you may laugh now, but ask any old country farmer and they'll tell you the same. Hey, by the way, for all you tree climbers out there, I just learned that August in our neck of the woods is when copperheads have their babies. Not only that, but copperheads climb trees to ambush and catch their favorite meal, the Katie did. So if I were you tree huggers, I would stay out of the trees when you visit. Just a neighborly piece of advice from a concerned country boy. Now, I know you are chomping at the bits wondering why I'm telling a story about snakes of all things. But just don't change your radio dial yet. And I promise you I'll explain everything shortly. That is if I don't have a coronary first. By the way, I did say I hate snakes, didn't I? Okay, 
I was just checking. You see, the copperhead doesn't have one of those fancy rattletails that warns you when you get too close his special sunning spot. No siree, he just lies there like a silent slug on a wet mossy rock until you set your foot down in his staked out territory, then BAM! With speed that nearly breaks a sound barrier, that copperhead has your ankle locked between its jaws of death like a Cajun alligator that hasn't had a decent meal in six weeks. Anyway, that copperhead drives those six inch fangs almost to the bone. At least they feel like they're six inches long. Not only that, as if he hasn't inflicted enough pain to stop a bull rhino, he injects his devilish poison into your sensitive bloodstream as you think you hear a band of angels singing, Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Hey, you just go ahead and chuckle all you want to, but someday when you least expect it, one of those copper-skinned, old-as-the-hills varmints may very well wrap its body around you like a worn-out garden hose. Now, how do you suppose a snake like the copperhead can outsmart humans? Well, I'm glad you asked, and I'll just tell you why. The copperhead gets its name from its color, which is copper and his copper color blends in with all the leaves falling from the surrounding trees in the forest. You know, like a white goose blending in with a snowstorm in December. Well folks, that's kind of the way the devil baits and bites people. You do remember the Bible calls him a no good for nothing slimy deceptive serpent, right? Well, I guess I paraphrase that a little bit, but he deserves it. From creation of time, Satan has been a master at deception, blending in with the environment, just waiting like a camouflaged copperhead to take a hunk out of your ankle and inject his poisonous venom. Only the serpent called the devil is far worse than the copperhead. You better believe it, he is. First, the Bible says the devil deceived one third of the angels in heaven to try and overthrow God, but he failed. Then after he got booted out of heaven, he deceived Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and sadly, he succeeded. And from that point on, mankind has been a target of this most hideous creature to ever crawl the surface of the earth. Too bad he didn't end up crawling on the surface of the sun, Satan was a murderer from the beginning, the Bible says, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. In other words, he is a deceiver, just like the copperhead is. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it, John chapter 8, verse 44. So, Satan can bait, bite, and destroy you by deception. Remember that, deception. Be very cautious where you step in this world. The Bible says he walks about seeking whom he can devour. And don't forget all those fallen angels that joined up with him. They are just as deadly and as mean as he is. Well, folks, I sure hope this message has been a warning to all of us to watch out for Satan and those mean old copperheads. I sure hope I get this story out of my head before I go to bed tonight. I don't want to have any of those bad dreams. So until next video, this is Pastor Greg saying, keep your eyes to the skies for your redemption draws nigh.